Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.8.6 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to Tutorial 8, DO Mode. Today we're going to discuss the mode of the radar which allows us to plot the positions of aircraft on the VTB without us actually receiving radar returns. Now why would we do this? This is quite a handy mode for plotting out targets that have been given to you by, for example, AWACS, who might give you a call uh, on an aircraft position based on bullseye or similar information, and using this system you can plot it on your VTB, get symbology, and approach that target. And you can even do this with the radar in silent mode, because it doesn't require your radar to be emitting, so it means that you can approach a target uh, somewhat uh, silently could be useful in certain intercept scenarios. So uh, let's uh, jump into the cockpit and yeah a DO mode that stands for designation objectif uh, in English objective designation <laughs> basically. Um, so it's the ability to plot a target based on a reference. Now I started my, my little timer here uh, when the mission began and I'm going to use this as my time reference because I know where my target was at the start of the mission. Uh, and you can see here, I've currently got my radar in silent, uh, and in the middle of the VTB we have displayed SIL for silent. So, uh, we use the controls around the edge of the VTB to do this. We start the process by putting the DEB fin switch up into the DEB position, and that prepares the system to enter uh, contact information. It also sets a, a delta. Uh, a time delta at the top left. So this means that any time that I give it will also have this delta added. Um, so in actual fact, I, I'm going to need to subtract this number from whatever I tell it. But anyway, that's fine. The first thing we want to do is use the N switch. N switch is setting the waypoint that we're using as a reference. The, the reference has to be uh, either our current position, which is waypoint 00, or one of the waypoints loaded into the INS. Uh, luckily, we have waypoint 4 loaded in the INS, and that is co-located with our bullseye. Now, by default, it's going to set all the other parameters in relation to our aircraft to that waypoint, but we're going to reset these anyway. So, the next uh, switch is called row, uh, the row switch. It's this kind of backwards squiggly funny thing, uh, and that's going to set the distance. Uh, so, uh, the... The callout that I got from AWACS was Bullseye 030, sorry, 080 for 43 nautical miles. Uh, so I'm simply going to advance this to 43. Like I said, it defaulted to our current distance to that waypoint. Uh, the next one we have is Theta, and Theta is the bearing. So we had a bearing of 080 in our callout, so we're going to set 080. C is the target's heading. Um, so I just happen to know that the target is heading 270, or approximately 270, so it should be pretty much due west. We're going to enter that. Uh, Z for Zulu is altitude uh, in hundreds of feet, so this is reading 20,000 feet. That's actually correct for our target, but we could adjust it if we wanted to. Mach number, 0.8, uh, that's actually correct for our target. And then we're going to need to take a little look at my timer. Uh, my timer's reading one, two, three, let's call it three minutes. Um, so three times 60, that's 180. It will actually, no, it's minutes and seconds, so I just need to increment this until it reads 3.0. So let's do that. And the good thing is it doesn't matter how long it takes us to enter this because we have the delta time at the top left, which will be applied automatically. Okay, once we're done, we flip the deb fin switch down into fin for finished or finish, and we now get this uh, yellow line, and on top of that we get the standard target information here. Uh, so we have Mach number of the target, heading, uh, our closure rate, and their altitude, uh, even though this is not a target that our radar can see, because um, the radar is off. So if I, um, if I bump the range out a little bit, let's see here. There we go. We now get ghost symbology, as it's called. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pause the simulation here. Uh, we have aspect, so 130. Uh, we have a normal target symbol, but inside dashed brackets. 
and then we also have a dashed line showing its direction of travel and then again you've got normal target information up here at the top um, so we are now ready to try to intercept this target and I'm going to leave the radar off until we get just a little bit closer uh, so one moment I'm going to reset my view and we'll be right back Okay, so you rejoin me. We're currently inbound this ghost contact, uh, and let's get a little bit closer, and I will then turn on the radar and see how well our symbology lines up. I'm going to pop the aircraft into policing mode. Uh, just so you're aware, uh, policing mode allows us to get uh, HUD symbology for targets that we lock up uh, without actually employing weapons. So this is uh, what, we would, what we would use in the real world for intercepting uh, civilian aircraft, basically, where we don't want to accidentally engage our weapons. So, uh, we're at about 30 nautical miles. Let's go ahead and put the radar back into emissive, and let's take a look at the VTB, and there we go. It's not perfect. Uh, there was a slight discrepancy between the time I said uh, the target had been flying in the real time, but that's pretty damn close. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, depress, and we have a lock. That's worked pretty good. And, uh, oh, it's complaining that we're going to lose the lock, however. Let's uh, switch it to STT. That's worked better. Uh, and you have the option of pushing Theta down to clear that target information. Uh, so, let's, uh, let's go ahead and come around. Oh, we've actually lost it. We've lost that target. And what it's doing is it's... Uh, let me just break that lock. It's actually automatically recreated a ghost... Uh, target for us. So let, let me just pause there and I'll talk about this very quickly for a moment. Uh, when you lose a target, either because the radar is lo uh, radar lock is lost or you press the weapon system command uh, depress, um, you will get ghost symbology again and it will automatically have entered all the parameters that the radar gave it just before the lock was lost. And as we can see here, it's very easy for us to determine which aircraft it was that we previously had because it's still co-located with that. Now, of course, as time goes on, the aircraft might drift from where the ghost symbology is. I've tried a lock again, and that actually worked. We've got a good lock there. Let's go and uh, disengage autopilot and maneuver for symbology. This is all the standard symbology we would always have. Uh, however, we don't have any possibility of launching a weapon in police mode. So I guess I'm also covering police mode here <laughs> for, for you all. A little bit of bonus extra information. Uh, but you can see how well that worked. And um, that's going to work pretty good as long as the information you've been given is accurate. Uh, and of course, the, the longer it's been since that report, the more likely it is that the aircraft has manoeuvred uh, and changed its, its position in some way. Uh, but that's been more than enough for us to actually approach this target with our radar off and intercept it. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option for a small monthly fee of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hack's ground crew. You can do that by clicking join below. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Big shout out to Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kambari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdin Kertan, Belly Tapani Corpicanas, Tiger Moto, Sean IM81, Charts, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.